Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of C++ STL and today we will be learning about some associative containers provided by STL. So to start with, uh, we will be seeing how we can use map and to use maps we need to include map. Now before we begin, we should understand what maps are. Maps are basically associative containers that represent one to one relations from one set to another. That means we have a set called keys and let's say keys have three elements x1 x2 and x3 and then we have a set called values and they have some correspondent values from the keys let's say y1 y2 and y3 now two things here we have to notice one thing is that the number of elements present in this set is equivalent to the number of elements present in this set and for each value present in the key there is only one value that can be mapped in that is present in values so this is how basically one to one relation means and to represent such one to one relations we can use maps now you may be wondering what are the basic differences between maps and unordered maps so ma unordered maps they usually implement hash tables however in case of maps they usually implement uh, binary search trees that means whenever you are trying to uh, make an insertion deletion or lookup in unordered maps it's going to take a order of one time whenever you are going to make a insertion deletion or lookup at maps it's going to take order of uh, log n time because they are implementing binary search trees and uh, the best algorithms that can uh, do insertion deletions and lookups uh, in binary search tree they take order of log n time so if you want uh, order of one complexity and just ha use a hash table and algorithms that go with hash tables you should use unordered maps instead of map but if you are uh, looking for uh, implementation of binary search trees that are having key value pairs then obvious choice is map not unordered maps okay so maps have many similarities with unordered maps uh, especially when it comes to deletion and insertion uh, like you can just say uh, let's say map of int comma int map one and we can say map one dot insert and here we can uh, specify a key value pair uh, let's say we have a two comma three okay. and we can insert like this even we can use a pair of int comma int and then we can insert them and also we can use initializer lists as we have seen in earlier videos okay and apart from that we can also insert values in maps by using our bracket notation so you have to remember one thing about using maps is that whenever you are inserting a value you should be careful that the key should be unique not a duplicate because if you are uh, using a duplicate key there there are chances that uh, it will be modified rather than being assigned to a new key value pair okay because maps work that way if you want to a, a key to have multiple values then you should go with uh, let's say uh, multi maps okay or multiple maps uh, you should remember that uh, if you are, if you are going to use uh, function algorithms like sort in maps or unordered maps they are obviously going to be failed because these are relations these are associative lists and no way they are going to support such things as uh, sorting because uh, there, there is no sense in sorting a map okay also the same thing goes for uh, sets so if you are wondering about uh, which algorithms we can use you should always think about the data structure it's using and depending on that you should understand what kind of algorithms that uh, they provide okay so maps provide an interesting function uh, which unordered maps don't and we have already discussed uh, discussed about that function and that's fine so let me first have some key value pairs in my map let's say we have two for three and we have uh, let's say four for five and we also have a uh, 
let's say six for ten. Okay, now so we can say map one dot find, or we can simply use the find algorithm provided by the algorithm library. And here we will we want to find a key. Let's say we want to find uh, where the value for the four key in the map. So we can simply say map dot find, and then we can say uh, let's say see out map dot find. And this is going to return an iterator. If you have seen the previous videos, then you should know that uh, this kind of uh, for the find actually returns an iterator to the position. And to get the value, we will use uh, dot second because these are key value pairs, as you have already seen in earlier videos. And that will give me uh, the value five. Okay, uh, for the key in this case. Now let's say we want to just check whether a value is present in a map or not, and for that we can use the same approach that we use with find. We can just simply say if map one dot find, and then we are just looking for let's say three as a key, and that if is not equals to map one dot end. That means the value is actually present, so we can uh, simply say present. Okay, and uh, we can execute the logic here for the value being present. So, like all other still containers, map one also have uh, let's say begin and end iterator, and we also have map one dot end for it, uh, iterating through the maps. We have seen these kind of iterations in earlier video, so I am not going to explain those things. We also have clear to just uh, clear the whole container, and also if the container is empty, to check that we have also the empty function, e m p t y, this one, and uh, we can you just simply you just simply put it inside a if, and you will find out whether a map is empty or not. Depending on that, uh, it will return true or false. Okay, so. We can include algorithm library and use upper bound and lower bound, uh, giving the end iterator and the beginning iterator to the functions first parameters, like most of the algorithms that are uh, specified in algorithm library does. But also maps and unordered maps comes with these algorithms, so we can just simply say map one dot let's say upper bound, and I want to understand uh, what's the upper bound for let's say the key four, okay, and we can also say Map one dot lower bound for four. Now uh, you can see that four is present here in this third element present in this map. So the upper bound, uh, the lower. First, let's talk about the lower bound. So the lower bound, it's going to return this third element. Okay, uh, because uh, the value that is the first encountered by the match that is here four as a key is going to be returned by the lower bound, and if the value is not present, then the next value that is slightly greater than that value is going to be returned. So in case this item was absent, this value was supposed to be returned. Now in case of upper bound, it's always going to be returned the last item uh, that matches to the query and uh, not the so in case of upper bound it's always going to return the item that is situated after the last item that's going to match the query you can think them as uh, if uh, suppose i have a data let's say 1 2 3 4 5 and dot 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 so on and the upper bound the lower bound is like where the data is starting okay and the upper bound is like Uh, the next element after the data has end, uh, the matching data has ended. So uh, you can think of upper bound and lower bound like this, and they are also applicable for unordered maps as well. But yeah, don't try to sort your maps and unordered maps; they are not gonna work. Okay. Uh, we have covered most of the things that are present in map, and if you haven't. Uh, seen the previous video about unordered maps i would highly recommend that you go back and watch that video because we have covered a lot of things there uh, for unordered uh, for that are almost similar to maps so we are not going to cover those things again or so it will be boring for most of the people who are watching this whole thing as a series rather we will discuss about a new container that is called as a set okay 
so we are going to include set and for sets uh, let's look at this example that i gave you first so like maps maps are one to one relations from one set to another like and sets you can think them as one of these so what are sets sets are something uh, that are associatively connected with each other and uh, the sets they are also implemented using binary search trees having a access time of order of n log n but the main difference between sets and other containers is that uh, sets don't co uh, contain duplicate values okay so let's say we have a set uh, of integers and uh, i'm going to assign some values to this uh, set let's say one one two three and so on okay so i am going to assign some uh, uh, random values that might be common to this set okay and now uh, let's say uh, let's give it a name first so s1 and so now let's iterate over this uh, set uh, we will be using iterators for that so let's say for uh, let's say set of int iterator i is equals to s1 dot begin i is less than s1 dot, i is not equals to not less than okay uh, don't use less than and uh, i am serious about this don't use less than it's not gonna work so s1 dot end and then i plus plus just incrementing the iterator and then i am simply see outing the value here let's say um, i want to access s1 uh, the ith element uh, i'm going to dereference it so star i and then i'm going to put a end line okay, to separate these values i'm having a lot of typos today so if we run this code we will see that we have only the unique values uh, and there are no copies present in sets so this is the main thing that differentiates a set and a list and a vector that is these values are unique and these are uh, gonna be unique no matter how many times you are going to push them so let's look at some other initializing methods for sets uh, or inserting methods for sets so we can just pass a initializer list to a set to insert those values so we can say that s1 dot insert And then we can just give here another initial list. Let's say two, four, seven, eight, five, seven, three. And now if we run this code, we will see that indeed seven and eight they are present in this set. Okay. So now let's look at upper bound and lower bound one second because upper bound and lower bound they also are present in sets as like vectors and other containers and we haven't seen a uh, like a running example of upper bound and lower bound again so let's look at that and for this example i'm going to see out and for this example i'm going to see out the upper bound for let's say 5 and then and this is going to give me an iterator so uh, to convert it into a value i'm just dereferencing it here this is a quick hack that you can use and also we are going to uh, provide the lower bound for the same thing uh, for the same key called 5 so let's say lower bound and then let's put a handle here now if we run this code we can see that the upper bound has returned me 6 that is the value that's present after 6 uh, after 5 that is 6 and the lower bound it has returned me 5 uh, because 5 is the lower bound of 5 uh, 5 uh, if 5 was not present here let's uh, say we want to see the upper bound uh, lower bound for uh, let's say Five also five, and let's remove all the uh, values that are present here as five. So as far as I can see, that was the only five present here, and also remove this one five here, 
and now let's run this code and let's see what's returned by lower bound as a 5 is not present anymore so yeah that's it for today guys hope you have enjoyed this session and see you next time